the Airbus A380, the Boeing 747, gigantic vehicles that are the largest passenger airplanes on Earth, the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building ever built by humans, New York City, the largest city in the United States. All of them have one thing in common, the size. Let's say we are in the design phase and we want to analyze the aerodynamics of the two airplanes or how storms will impact the Burj Khalifa or we want to analyze how the winds will affect the pollution in New York City. Let's find out how we can do that. All the examples that we just introduced can be analyzed using a scale model that can fit inside an experimental testing facility, such as a wind tunnel. In order to perform a consistent analysis, we need to respect some requirements. The first is geometric similarity. The real object and the model must have the same shape and be perfectly scaled geometrically, meaning that the ratio of the corresponding lens is always the same. The second fundamental requirement is dynamic similarity. This implies that the objects have to be geometrically similar and they must present similar flow patterns, meaning that the velocity field and the forces acting on them must scale with the geometry. For example, the streamline around the real body and the model will look the same if we have dynamic similarity. The importance of dynamic similarity is that the results obtained for the test model can be scaled and applied to the real system. It is common to see apply this concept in many research facilities where the scale models are used to analyze the behavior of the real system. Especially during the design phase of new vehicles or large buildings, it is useful to predict if the design will meet the expected performance. So, how can we make sure that the model and the real body are dynamically similar? The first step is to non-dimensionalize the problem. This means that we are going to take our governing equation and manipulate them to obtain their non-dimensional form. Any single solution of these equations will be equally valid for a multitude of similar problems. The second step is to use dimensionless parameters. They will emerge naturally from the non-dimensionalization of the governing equations. Those parameters are used to ensure the dynamic similarity. Indeed, two flows are dynamically similar if all the relevant dimensionless parameters are the same. In the next lectures, we are going to see how to approach these two steps and obtain the non-dimensional form of the equations, and also how to get a set of dimensionless parameters.